Welcome to the Crazy Sock Lady Podcast. My name is Kay. This is my YouTube where I share all about my crafting adventures. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as the Crazy Sock Lady. And I do have a group for this podcast on Ravelry. If you just look right down below this video, you're going to find links to everywhere that you can find me, as well as show notes for this episode that include links to project pages for things that I'm working on, shops that I talk about, etc. So today I have a couple of finished objects to share. I have a few works in progress, of course, lots to chat about, a few things I've received in the mail. So let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. So first up, I want to let you guys know I did draw winners for quarter four of the Stash Busters Cal that was being hosted in the Ravelry group. I have notified all winners via Ravelry. So check your Ravelry messages. Um, see if you got a message, if you participated. I will also put a screen at the end of this episode that will have a list of all of the Ravelry names for the winners. So you can also check there and see who our lucky winners were. Thank you guys so much for participating in last year's year long knit along. It was a lot of fun to host and so fun to see you guys working through your stash, falling back in love with your stash. I know I did a lot of that last year, especially with our move. Austin has just come downstairs to hop on our new stationary bike to get a workout in on his lunch break. You think it's gonna be tough? He doesn't know how to turn it on. Um, it's not plugged in. See that there's a cord? That's your dad's tablet. I don't know how to work it. You probably can. Pause for one moment. All right, I think he's ready to go. Do you have headphones? Okay. Where was I? Um, Stash Busters Cal, thank you guys so much for participating. Again, no year long knit along this year, but I can't wait for things like summer sock camp and whatever else may come up that we want to come together as a community and knit together on certain items for. So finished objects. Should we go ahead and talk about, about this beauty first? <laughs> I was supposed to talk about last week and totally forgot to. So I have my beaded Christmas sweater. I finished this December 1st. I'll check, I wrote it down. I'll check in just a moment, but this is, is my Christmas sweater. I love it so much. So I knit the Flax Light by Tin Can Knits and it is out of fingering weight yarn. I used Miss, B Miss Bob's, no, not Miss Bob's, Miss Babs Katahdin in the Catherine colorway. It is a huge ginormous skein of yarn and I actually have quite a bit left. <laughs> so that is what I knit this out of. I, the beads were not in the pattern. That is a modification that I made that I will be talking about in a separate video that will probably come out the end of this month, beginning of next month. Just as soon as I have time to finish it and edit it all, I will get it out for you guys. But I did add beads. I have um, a little bit of notes on my project page if you wanna go ahead and check it out. The video is going to be going over my notes. It's not gonna be, um, it's gonna tell you guys, like this is how I sat down and how I did it, but it's not gonna go over like this size and this is how you would add beads to that size and this size and all of that craziness that it could get into. It's not going to, it's just going to be me chatting about this is the method of how I figured out placement. Um, and then you can kind of go from there for your size or different sweaters, etc. So the changes that I made to the sweater, other than the beads, I did a twisted rib for all of the ribbing. That is just knit one through the back loop and then purl one. So all the ribbing, has a twisted rib. I just love the finished look of that. And then I also did the sleeves differently. So I did not do decreases on the sleeves. I just knit them completely straight. And I love how they are not super duper tight. I don't really enjoy when my sleeves are just skin tight on my arms. I like to have a little bit of room and I just think it looks so nice down here around the cuff. Let's see. I started this on October 10th. I finished it on December 1st. So not too bad. This was a ton of 30 minutes of sweater knitting in the morning when I first woke up. 
The beads that I used are a number six. Again, this information can be found on my product page on Ravelry. They are a number six and I ordered them from Fire Mountain Gems and Beads. I think that is it for this. It is absolutely gorgeous. Like I said, the only thing I did not think about is the fact that, especially when you first put this sweater on, or if you're in a room or outside where it's chilly, the beads get so cold. So all over beads, it's very cold. <laughs> but I guess that if you get overheated, it can kind of cool you down. I don't know, but that is the only thing. And I have not worn it a ton. I wore it out for date night one night. I did not wear it on Christmas, but that's okay. Next year, hopefully I'll wear it on Christmas. The only other finished object that I have is my Musselberg hat. This is the only finished object that was actually finished since the last episode. This one was already done. But this is my Musselberg hat. I was working on this last time. Try it on for y'all. It fits. This is the best fitting hat that I have ever made myself. They never seem to fit me quite right or feel quite right or stay on. This one is amazing. So I will show you in just a minute how it looks. This is how it looks on and with the brim folded. Could also, it would probably be pretty slouchy, but if you did not want the brim folded, you could do that and have slouchy, do a pom-pom if you wanted. I don't really like it like that. I like it with the brim folded because I think it, it feels better, it stays better, and this, I'm not just wearing this for looks in, around the house or you know wherever. I'm wearing it for warmth when we go on our walks. So it's nice for that purpose to have this folded up because it gives that extra added layer of fabric to keep my ears nice and warm. So this hat, you cast on at one end, do your increases, and then you're just knitting this huge long tube like this it is amazing it's like a huge sock and then when you get to the other end you just do some decreases finish it off so much fun and then you just basically like fold it in and on itself and you have a hat it is an any gauge pattern so that means that you can use any type of yarn it tells you stitches per inch so you um, do your increases and then you have um, how many stitches per inch. It tells you to measure, see what you're getting for your gauge. And then you follow the instructions for that. It tells you how, like if you need to keep doing increases, etc. How long to knit your tube, all of those things. I have plans to do two more of these so Eric tried it on I had made him a hat years ago I think when we lived in North Carolina it fits in fine it's still usable but he tried this on and was like oh yeah that's a lot warmer than the one I have feels better fits better and he wants one so I actually have some yarn coming from breaking yarn he wanted a gray so I have a yarn coming from her I'll show that should be here by next week I would think and I'm gonna make him a hat from that and then I was also talking to Molly of a homespun house this morning and she is sending me some of her ash colorway to make a hat for Wyatt. Obviously that probably won't be here for quite a while coming all the way from Germany, but when it gets here, I'm going to do little Mr. Wyatt. I shouldn't call him little Mr. Wyatt. He's not so little anymore, but I'm gonna make him a hat as well. Austin's too cool, you know, and he can't be bothered to wear hats that his mother makes him, so. I was thinking he might comment, but I don't think he's listening because he has his headphones in. That's the only other finished object. I love it. Oh, the yarn, I should probably talk about the yarn. The yarn I used is Noble Character Cat Crafts in the Dignity colorway. I love this yarn. Amy does not dye yarn anymore. So this yarn I was saving for something super special and this is it, it's just, the most perfect hat. You guys need to knit one, especially if you're a sock knitter and you just love vanilla socks and all that stockinette, this is it. I 
can't wait to cast another one on. That's how much I love it. All right, let's see. Was there anything else? The needles I used were a US two and a half, three millimeter. I started this on December 28th and finished it on January 7th. So I knit it pretty quickly, but again, it's just so much stockinette and that is so much fun. All right, works in progress. Can you guys hear Austin doing his workout? The bike is super quiet. You cannot hear the bike. I can't hear a sound from it. I chatted about that, I think in 2021 intentions that we got a stationary bike. I posted about it on Instagram and had some questions about what we got. We got the Bowflex, I think it's C6. It is great. You can use the Peloton app with it or anything like that. Hello, Gracie. She's coming to say hello. Um, so it's super great. Great workout. I did my first one yesterday and actually as soon as I finished recording, I'm going to go change and do another one as well. All right. First one, actually, I'm not going to show Chevron shenanigans because there has not been a ton of progress. I'll probably show that when I get a little bit further into the kind of color section that I'm on right now. So I won't show that one today. I have been working on the socks that I'm making for Eric. Have these in a bag from my friend Pam. She does not have a shop. In these socks, I'm knitting out of the pumpkins and wool sock set, the vineyard colorway. And I'm doing the shallow pattern, which is one of my designs. There's her logo. I got a good bit of progress done on this since last week. It looks pretty small, but the pattern can make it deceiving. It's, it's a good size sock, <laughs> but I love this pattern. It's so fun to do. I've done a contrast color for the heel, heel flap and gusset. And then I did two rounds of contrast at the top of the cuff. I've just done a knit one, purl one cuff for this. Yeah, it's been super enjoyable. I'm using the Haya Haya flyers, still trying to get used to them. We'll see if they, I, it does. I always say you gotta, you gotta give it a, a try, which means a couple of socks at least, um, before you can fully decide if you like something or not. So we will see I'm doing us one 2.25 millimeter Haya Haya flyers cast on 64 stitches. That is what fits Eric the best. I think that's it for those. Eric's birthday is the 25th of this month. So I would love to have those done to gift to him, but I don't know that it will happen. We'll see. So I can't recall if I talked last episode about how I have decided to do my 30 minutes of knitting to pull out whips that I brought from last year into this year and finish those off just working 30 minutes a day for my 30 minutes every morning. I pulled out Wyatt's stocking. That's my next work in progress. It was the Musselberg hat and since that's done, I picked another one. So Wyatt's stocking I have in a bag from Stolen Minutes. There is her logo. And I've made good progress. I am almost to the heel, just a couple more rounds and it's gonna be time to put in, you put in waist yarn and then do an afterthought heel. So I'm almost to that point. Oh, look how cute that is. I was so glad to be done with these gingerbread men. I will say that. I think it's turning out so sweet. These patterns are by She Thinks She Can. You can find a link for them within the project page that's linked below. This one was the one that Wyatt chose with the gingerbread men. Very happy to be done with them. There were some long, long floats in those gingerbread men. I'm hoping the yarn's gonna bloom a little bit and hide where I did carry the yarn, the floats, but we will see. Nothing's perfect. For some reason, people 
always show their floats and I never do collar work so I guess I should show mine there are my floats yeah this is why it's stocking I can't wait to have this done it's been a joy to knit I don't do collar work I've only done it a couple of times but this has been a lot of fun my dream is for everyone to have a stocking all four of us Okay, is this my last work in progress? My last knitting one, yes. I started a pair of socks. I have this in another bag from Stolen Minutes. And I showed the yarn last time from Mandy's Makings. I think I have the tag in here. Her Share a Pair sock set. with 250 gram skeins. Here's the yarn. And Amanda, I had said, you know, I want, Amanda has the other one. It would be so fun to knit these together. So she messaged me and said, yes, let's cast on. I need to reach out to her and see how she's doing on hers. But I have got a lot done on my first sock. So here it is. I've just put the heel in today. I'm knitting these on Chow Goo nine inch circulars. I cast on 64 stitches, knit two purl two for the ribbing. And what I decided to do is to stripe them. You'll see I'm striping the two colors. So this sock, the pink is gonna be the heel, toe, and cuff, and then I'm striping here. The second sock, the, um, Variegated is going to be the heel, toe, and cuff, and then I'll stripe in the pink. So they'll be matching. You'll know that they are, they're a pair that goes together, but not twins, not identical twins. <laughs> so these have been super fun. I'm not doing anything crazy. I know I'm probably gonna have questions about how I'm striping them to avoid jogs. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not doing anything special because I just want these to be mindless socks. So I don't know if you can kind of tell right down through there is where the join is for the round. I'm just not bothered by that enough to put the time and energy into stopping it. And then you can tell where I'm carrying the yarn on the inside. I'm just making sure I don't pull them too tight and because that would cause the the side of that sock to kind of gather up a little bit. So I'm just watching my tension and having so much fun working those up. Okay, one more work in progress. It's not knitting, I just have it in a basket here. I started a cross stitch. I think I had started it before last week's podcast, but I forgot to show it. So I've had this for a while. It is just a kit that I ordered. I have it linked via the Amazon link down below this video. It says it's by Design Works. Here's the picture. I think it is super sweet. And You Are My Sunshine was kind of a song that my nanny and I would sing a lot. Um, and she would sing to me when I was a child. So it's just super special. I loved it. My nanny is my mom's um, mom. So this just means a lot to me that saying and I saw this and had to have it it's a kit that came with all of the thread it does have some beads that go with it as well oh there they are I was gonna say oh no I've lost them it has some beads that came with it that you attach here's what I have done so far I just sat down and did this the Saturday before last. That was my progress from the afternoon. I love this kind of cross stitch. I'm figuring out that I'm not a full um, cover picture cross stitch gal. I just can't, my brain won't, <laughs> I don't know why. Um, but this kind, super simple, some words, a simple little photo, that's more my, my jam, so. I can't wait to have this done. I have dreams of a gallery wall in my living room. There's already one cross stitch there that I did years ago. Um, 
just full of different cross stitch photos that I've done. It'll obviously take a while because knitting is, is my first love with crafting. All right, let's see what we have next. I did do a knit crate unboxing. I've recorded it. It's not up yet. It'll be up this Saturday. So just a couple of days after this podcast goes up, this will be my first knit crate box I've ever received. They are a yarn subscription box. I'm very excited to share the one that I received with you guys. And going forward, I'll be getting the sock membership. This one's a regular membership um, crate, and then I'll be getting the sock crate going forward. So we'll have a couple of months at least that we'll be sharing knit crate unboxings, and I can't wait to see what all their box entails and share that with y'all. I also received a little bit of crinkling there, a Row One Yarns, their January subscription. So Row One Yarns does a different yarn dyer every month and you receive mini skeins. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out here. All of the goodies. I love that it comes in this cute bag. I have a little note here so I can tell you who the yarn dyer is. 29 Bridges, which is actually a yarn dyer that I have never heard of. So Laura is the the idea and the brain behind Row One subscription. It is the Carnival of Color Club from Row One Yarn, and it is a monthly subscription that she started almost four years ago. So there's a different dyer each month. The dyers are a mystery. So that of course adds a whole other level of fun. I love subscription boxes. I love yarn clubs. I just think the mystery and the surprise behind it is the fun. So each kit comes with 10 10 gram minis. And for those who order two kits per month, they get different colorways in each kit. So you would get 20 colorways if you chose that option. You can just get the one with 10 10 gram minis, or you can choose to get two and you would have 20 10 gram minis. It's always fingering weight yarn, usually 75, 25 or 80, 20. So for sock knitters, it's a perfect, absolutely perfect. There was a little bit of extra. I know I'm the suspense. I'm not showing the yarn yet and it is beautiful. Calvin is sneezing. Did you guys hear that? So there were some extras in here. I don't know if this actually, yeah, it is. This is what comes with the, the subscription each month. And it tells you who the yarn dyer is. So like I said, it's 29 bridges. It tells you that you get 100 grams of color and it has the 10 colorways listed. I know you guys won't be able to read all of that, but it has all of that listed there. It tells you care instructions, who's the dyer behind 29 bridges, all kinds of information. Oh my goodness, there's a Biscoff cookie in here, but there's only one, that's sad. But the, these are my favorite y'all to have with coffee. Oh my Lanta, I love these so much. I'm gonna have to hide this from Austin. He just finished his workout and went upstairs and I'm not kidding, he will eat them or eat it. There's one, he will eat it, that's mine. Oh, this is cute. So there's a little, open this up, a little progress keeper in here with some 2021 confetti. And the progress keeper is 2021. That is so cute. Or excuse me, it's a, a stitch marker. I know somebody will correct me. There's some tea. And the yarn. I can't wait to cast on scrappy socks with this. I'm not gonna open up and go through all of them. And it is in the packaging, but oh my. It is gorgeous. So pretty. Okay, 
I'm going to open it real quick. Because, look at those. Are those not my color? Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> I have a color. These are stunning. This is Berry. And this is Pier. These are beautiful. They're going to make the most gorgeous pair of stripy socks. I can't wait. The yarn is so soft and squishy. So that is all that I've received in the mail. What else is going on? So the boys start back to school on Tuesday, the 19th. Eric is at work, like in the office for the first day, like full day. First time he's gone into work there since we moved here. He's been working from home. It's not that he hasn't been working. He's been working from home like so many others are, <laughs> but this is his first time going in and excited and I'm so excited the boys are going back I feel like things might shift back into um, somewhat of a normal routine fingers crossed I sure hope so Wyatt has still been loving his um, guitar lessons he's doing wonderful with that Austin's still playing basketball I'm trying to settle back into a good work routine. I tried to sit down and plan out this month as far as things I want to record and things I want to work on. I'm still just not really feeling the pull to work on designs and I'm just kind of going with that flow and I know that when the time is right, the inspiration will come. Um, right now I'm just enjoying knitting on all of of the projects that I have going and I'm not gonna push myself or pressure myself in any way to work on designs sorry about that maybe that's a little disappointing but um I just feel like you can't push that kind of stuff you just have to let it ebb and flow so when it comes back it'll come back and then all the ideas will be there that kind of catches you up with what's going on just pretty much normal life stuff around here I hope that you all are doing well and that you're getting a lot of making done. I am going to clean up here and then head upstairs and get changed and hop on that bike and get a workout done. I'm going to do it. I was doing the 20, um, not 20, 30 days of yoga with yoga with Adrian. I've been posting about that on my Instagram. I have not done it today. I feel like I may be a yoga with Adrian dropout and we didn't even make it halfway through the month but the bike is calling my name and same with that the ebb and flow of workouts i'm just going with it and doing what i feel like doing which is hopping on that bike so <laughs> i'm gonna go get that done before the boys get out of school well before they wrap up school they're in school in their rooms on zoom but i'm gonna get a workout done before they finish up for the day I will see you guys again next week for another podcast episode. Until then, happy knitting. Bye.